What's up everyone? This is Gustavo Dantas. Welcome to vlog number 14. I hope you've been enjoying the recap of the top 10 mental mistakes jiu-jitsu competitors make and how to avoid them. And I already mentioned that the message of the BJJ Mental Coach is to inspire people to become more emotionally mature, not only to handle under pressure situations like tournaments, but to face your fears, anxieties, go after your goals and dreams, not only in jiu-jitsu, but in your personal and professional life as well. And today I'd like to share with you how the mistake number four, which is dwelling on mistakes, can hit us from different angles in our personal and professional life and can hold us back. And I'm gonna share with you two personal stories that will help to enrich the message. And as you already know, I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. This is only my perception about the topic. I'm pretty sure you have yours. It doesn't mean that mine is right or wrong. So whatever you feel is applicable to you, use it and whatever you don't, just put to the side. So if you are interested in growing, evolving, not only as an athlete, but as a human being, this video is for you. Have you ever experienced a tournament that maybe you won, but you didn't feel fully satisfied with your performance? If you didn't, good for you. But if you did, imagine when you lost, most likely you were even harder on yourself. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a story that happened with me that eventually gave me the clarity to understand my pattern of dwelling on mistakes. And it happened in 2008 at the Brazilian Nationals. I was competing in the Masters Division for the first time. It was the year that I was turning 34. And I created high expectations for this tournament. I was like, no one's gonna score points on me. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever done this before, but created high expectations. Sometimes even maybe an opponent, opponent that on the paper, you're supposed to just run over and it didn't go the way you planned. So oftentimes this bring a lot of frustration and end up dwelling on mistakes. But what happened is in my very first match, I started losing 2-0. I remember getting swept, I'm like, oh, really? And came back and ended up winning the match. Second match, same thing happened. I started losing 2-0, came back and won the match. The third one, I ended up winning by a larger amount of points, but I did make a lot of mistakes in that match. In the final, I closed out with my teammate, Rodrigo Feijão, which is one of the best coaches in Brazil at competition jiu-jitsu, and we ended up closing out the division. And I remember after the tournament, people saying, man, you did awesome. You're the guy to beat in the division. But in my head, I was like, what well, match were, were they watching? I messed up this, I messed up that. Have you ever felt like this before? That you completely neglected the positive things that you did, it just went straight to the negative. And I only went to start to understand more about this two years later, when I started studying mental skills training. That's when I started to understand more about perfectionism. Perfectionism is not necessarily bad though, it's gotta be a balance because you have good positive things about perfectionism, which is usually if you are or know people who are perfectionists, they have good work ethic. They're hard workers. They don't accept any mediocrity. They always try to accomplish things and done, get things done well. And here's the catch though. Sometimes this kind of obsession for perfection can breed high expectations. Like mine, no one's gonna score points on me. <laughs> and when you don't meet those expectations, you end up dwelling on mistakes, ended up being hard on yourself. And that's basically I was doing. Have you ever felt like this before? That maybe, yeah, you know, being hard, putting that expectation very high and not meeting those expectations. And it was interfering big time in my self-satisfaction, which is one of the key benefits of studying mental skills training. So if you feel that you've been dwelling on mistakes a lot after the tournament, one thing that I suggest for you is first, literally forgive yourself and say like, I did the best I could with the tools and knowledge that I had at that moment, with the emotional maturity that I had at that point. But we need to focus on the now. So when you focus on now, you need to analyze your performance the most rational way possible and ask two questions. Number one, what did you do right? Just think about what did you do right to make sure that I keep doing the positive things? And what could you have done differently if you were in the same situation? So at least you don't make the same mistake or at least minimize the chance of making the same mistake. And accept the fact that, man, not always gonna have perfect performances. You're going against another opponent that has goals and dreams, has been training, and is trying to win as well. 
And oftentimes this attitude of all nothing, zero or 10 can bring a lot of frustration. And it took me a few years to realize how that was impacting my professional life. Around 2013, 14, when I started to develop a little bit more the idea of the BJJ Mental Coach, especially when I started seeing the impact I was doing, making in my life, not only competition, but other areas, I started to share with my students and I started noticing the improvement as well. I'm like, you know what? I'd like to share this with more people. And one of the ideas would be creating some type of product. But I felt that I kept procrastinating. I was always like waiting for the right moment. Oh, when I get more knowledge, after I do this other course, when I get this, when I get that. And I kept pushing and pushing and postponing until finally my public speaking mentor, his name is Joe Weldon. He's 75 years old now in 2016. He's been a huge influence in my life. He told me, Gustavo, you're a perfectionist. No matter what you do, you're never going to do a 10 in your scale. So for now, get this product and just do it. Maybe according to your scale, do a 7. Maybe the next one's a better version. You do a 7.1, 7.2. But keep improving the quality. But just do it. And then I finally accept, like, you know what? <laughs> That's what I need to do. I need to get this out. And I mentioned in one of the articles that I wrote before and in one of the videos too that after my academy, accomplished my academy, this is the second most meaningful accomplishment, professional accomplishment that I've ever achieved because of like how much I face my fears, anxieties and overcoming my perfectionism and put all my knowledge out to help others. And you got to think about what have you been waiting for to to maybe accomplish this meaningful goal that you've been wanting for so long, but you keep postponing because you're waiting for the right moment. You know, you're waiting for this, waiting for that. Maybe it could be the tournament you want to compete, but it could be a book that you want to write, maybe a, a website that you want to start, a blog, whatever that is. Just don't let perfectionist, perfectionism hold you back the same way it did, it did hold me and held so many people and it still holds so many people back. So the best thing is just feel that fear, embrace that, that fear, feel that anxiety, and do it anyway. And that's a great quote that the Zig Ziglar, one of the most famous motivational speakers uh, in the world said, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. So if you have anything that you feel that your perfectionism is, is holding you back, preventing you from maybe achieving meaningful goals in your life, this is a good time to reflect and pull the trigger because it's never too late. I hope you guys enjoyed the information. If you liked the video, please press like, subscribe to the channel, and check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash the BJJ Mental Coach, and I see you all soon. Oos.